Coming up on the Buckeye Guard, we remember the 20th anniversary of the terrorist attacks on 9-11. The Ohio Army National Guard unwraps new all-terrain vehicles, and 180 fighter wing pilots head north for readiness training. Military police officers of the Ohio National Guard's 437th Military Police Battalion spent time this summer getting familiar with the newest vehicle in the state's inventory. We're doing the initial driver's training for about 80 soldiers on the new uh, MAT-V that's coming out to the units. The MAT-V is based off the MRAP that we've had for a while. Uh, it's going to be the replacement for the Humvee. Uh, it's much larger, uh, better capabilities, better safety than the Humvee. The MRAP all-terrain vehicle is designed to provide the same levels of protection as the larger and heavier previous mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles, but with a focus on improved mobility. They're going to be learning the, the basic layout of the vehicle, uh, safety features, at least so the majority of this course is going to end up being actual drive time for the soldiers because that's what's most important. First day is all classrooms, so it's, it's a little painful for some soldiers, but we're getting out there today to do some PMCS. The next uh, couple days we'll be doing some driving, so they're much more excited about that. This was originally in process for about two years. We were supposed to get these last year. With COVID, there were some delays, and so now that fielding is taking place uh, this, this summer. So 60 coming to the Ohio Army National Guard and then specifically to the 437th MP Battalion through the Department of Defense. So inside those crates, there is, there's, a, there's a plethora of things. There's over about 220 items within the crates and then we've got a couple other boxes that, out there. So one truck, you're looking right around like 775,000 for just the truck alone. When you add in those pieces, parts and components uh, and the things that go along with it, roughly about a million dollars a piece. So for the total we get here, 60, you're looking at 60 to 65 million dollars of, of Army equipment. Spirits are up today since we're out of the classroom. Uh, they're excited to get out there and get in these things and check them out. We're up here at TDY in Alpena. Um, we're primarily using Grayling Range is where we're flying out of and training out there. Uh, just doing some air to ground tactics, practicing like basic bombing patterns, uh, kind of dropping unguided uh, dumb bombs, if you will. Uh, just dropping 500 pounders, inerts and lives, uh, shooting about 200 rounds on the gun for each jet. Just kind of practicing um, getting that air to ground training. We are able to fly up to Grayling Range from home base, but coming up to Grayling, TDY and flying out of here, uh, the big thing is it saves us a lot of gas. You get to tr use that at the range, so you have a lot more range time, and get a lot more gas spent on the training itself. It increases our air to ground proficiency and uh, just basic bombing skills, you know, and our hand-eye coordination on the range itself, not relying on the, like laser guided weapons and stuff because those can all fall and you might have to default back to those basic tactics of air to ground, dumb bomb training and dropping. So it's really good to hit those and kind of keep those currencies up. The good thing with this range is we're able to do low angle strafe. Um, so you're getting, you can get to at some points about 100 feet above the ground. So real close, it's the closest you'll ever get in, in the jet. And that's always fun shooting a gun. We get about 200 rounds, which is about two seconds of gun. So they, they get expended quick, but definitely fun, it never gets old. Being able to bring the iron up here, put it on the ramp, um, and have our maintainers and every, every other support activity right here. You know, we come up here, obviously you're, you're away from home, so the challenges are you don't have the assets and all the equipment that we're accustomed to back uh, at Toledo at the guard base. All of our airmen have been responding brilliantly to the challenges of fixing aircraft, which happens every day. It's a $35 million asset. It's got one motor and one pilot. The core of maintenance is safety. So anytime we work on the airplane, we make sure that uh, anything that we do is properly completed. We ensure that we do it properly and safely. Anyone old enough to remember the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001, is likely to remember vivid details of that day 20 years ago, where they were, what they were doing and the emotions they were feeling as hijacked airplanes crashed into the World Trade Center towers, the Pentagon, and a field in Pennsylvania. Major General John Harris, Jr., Ohio Adjutant General, was a lieutenant colonel and administrative officer for the 37th Brigade on 9-11. The emotions went from 
uncertainty to disbelief. It took a long time to get our heads around the fact that we were literally watching our country be attacked. Within hours of the attack, Ohio Air National Guard pilots were among the first in the fight. Two F-16 fighter jets were scrambled from the 180th fighter wing near Toledo to intercept any airplanes still in the skies after the terrorist attacks. KC-135s from the 121st Air Refueling Wing in Columbus were sent to refuel the military aircraft. Major General James Camp, Assistant Adjutant General for Air, a captain on 9-11, was a pilot on one of the tankers. So we took off. Uh, it was a really eerie feeling because I remember uh, the controller, he basically said, well, you're cleared east, any altitude, any, any speed. Uh, good luck to you guys. He said, you're really one of the only airplane, airplanes right now airborne over the you know, east of the Mississippi other than the other military aircraft. It was a very beautiful day, clear blue skies. So from pretty far out, we could actually see the smoke, the smoke billowing up in the sky from, from the Pentagon. By late September and into October, hundreds of Ohio National Guard airmen and soldiers were called to federal duty to support America's war on terrorism. For the first time since 1952, the 1st Battalion, 148th Infantry, mobilized for federal service. The mission called for defense efforts on American soil as soldiers were sent to augment security at military locations. Everybody wanted to do their part and we actually got to go. I'm not, I know we didn't go to Iraq, I understand that, but we got to, we did what we were called to do and we did it well. Also called for that mission were members of the 135th Military Police Company based in Brook Park and the 323rd Military Police from Toledo. Colonel Jeff Watkins was a captain at the time and commander of the 323 and remembers the quick pace of getting that company mobilized and out the door to augment security at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. We had always practice, alert, roster verification, things of that nature, and it was a lot different than the deployments of the day. So we spent five days at the 323 Armory getting us out, getting us out the door. And it was five of the quickest days of getting equipment together, planning a call to duty ceremony at the time. Security was increased at Ohio National Guard installations as well. Guard members fanned out across multiple sites in the United States, including commercial airports. That was quickly followed by overseas deployments for Air and Army National Guard units to countries like Pakistan, Germany, and Turkey. The war on terrorism has come at a cost. I think it's important for everyone, Guard, all compos, all the civilians who support us, the employers that support us, to always remember those 15 Ohio Guard members that were lost. Because uh, not only is it a vivid reminder of the, the stakes, the cost of what we do, and the importance of what we do, but the commitment of our National Guard soldiers. One of the tangible ways the Ohio National Guard has remembered the 9-11 attacks is a special memorial at the 180th Fighter Wing near Toledo. This memorial includes a beam from the World Trade Center, limestone from the Pentagon, and soil from the Pennsylvania field where United Flight 93 crashed. Since 9-11, the Ohio National Guard has experienced a high operational tempo with state and federal deployments. The National Guard went from a strategic reserve where you didn't get tapped on the shoulder that often early in my career, which was, I think, part of the reason why I was ready to, to, to separate from the military. Uh, but it shifted from a strategic reserve to uh, what it is today, and today it's an operational necessity. The mindset has changed significantly, and the tempo is, is quite frankly something we could not have anticipated 20 years ago. Uh, the high point 20 years ago was going to an annual training period. Now the annual training period is just a milestone on the way to that next deployment. To see more about the Ohio National Guard, go to ong.ohio.gov and be sure to follow us on your favorite social media platforms.